Oh, I could be all it is you need Cause we are trying to find a way to feel If I could sleep, I'd dream of what we'd be But I can feel you slip further from me What is up guys, Osmond here. And the box you see right there, it's for the Tomahawk B350 motherboard. Now this is basically the motherboard that I chose for my editing slash gaming Red Panther build. Now the build guide obviously will be posted later, but the few key components that I picked up are down in the playlist. So if you missed some of them, you can go ahead and watch them out. Now coming to this motherboard, I will list down a few reasons why it is still a, an awesome buy in 2018 and the features that it does offer and the trade-offs that you have to actually succumb if you're purchasing this particular board. That being said, let's get to today's video. So first things first, if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing as there's lots more PC-oriented videos coming up on the channel. I've got the build log of the Red Panther, I've got a few more other videos coming up of mobile and other platforms as well. So if you want or are interested in my sort of videos or how I present them, then definitely get subscribed. So coming to the specs that really matter to almost any PC builder. Now, first and the obvious thing is that it supports the Ryzen AM4 chipset. And so also the stock cooler that comes with the CPU, which I might tell you is super good. Now, that is really awesome as you don't need to buy additional brackets for that unless probably you're putting a beefier cooler. But with my system running with the 1700, I'll probably keep the stock cooler as it performs really, really good. Well, since it's priced around 80 to 100 bucks, depending on when and where you get it, there are a reasonable amount of ports on the system as well. You get uh, four SATA 6 gigabyte ports compared to the six on the ASUS or gigabyte variants. Now you also have three USB 3.1 Gen 1 ports and a couple of USB 2.0 along with obviously a USB Type-C which is a nice touch to see at this particular price point. However, if you are wanting more USB ports then you might just look for the ASUS or gigabyte motherboard. They will cost you slightly a bit but that is what you need then you need to go for it. Now for the onboard audio it's got the 8 channel 7.1 HD audio which has the Realtek ALC829 codec. Now this is a slightly old codec, but maybe this is the way of keeping the price down for this particular board. It's got four DIMM slots and it supports dual channel DDR4 memory. Now we'll have to see how well it overclocks as I want to push my Crucial Ballistics RAM to 2933. So let's see, hopefully I can hit that particular RAM speed. Now if you want to put an NVMe SSD, on this one you can as you have one M.2 slot for it which I will be utilizing for those blazing fast boot times and application load times. So stay tuned for that. Well now speaking of the PCIe support it's got three PCIe 2.0 and one PCIe 3.0 support which again tells you that this can be easily used to give you super performance for only one graphics card. Though it's not recommended and it does support two-way AMD Crossfire technology but I would stay away from it. Now, if you want a lot of fan headers on your particular motherboard, this one's got you covered. It's got five fan headers, might I tell you, and that is excluding the CPU fan header, which is really nice. And most of these, or the three of them, are located on the right side or the right edge of it. One is at the bottom and one is right in the center. Not exactly, but close to the CPU. Now, for the RGB lovers out there, it's got a dedicated RGB header as well. So for that sweet, sweet RGB magic, you can actually use this motherboard. Now it supports an RGB strip up to a rating of 12 volts, and this can be controlled using the MSI gaming app, which I will test out and let you know how it is. Now for the first time builders, this board is awesome as it's got debug LED as well, which will help you out, letting you guys know what exactly is the problem. If it's your CPU, your graphics card, or your RAM, it's not fit in all the way properly, you can just fix it without panicking. So that's really good. Now, who is this meant for? This is meant for the budget-oriented consumer. So if you've got a fixed target that you want to spend on a motherboard, this one is just right. It will fit you in, in that 100, 150 price tag. 
and if you don't want to spend above $100, I think this particular motherboard will serve you just fine. The M.2 supports the PCIe Express lane, even it's got SLI crossfire on this, so you can stick in two uh, graphic cards, but I wouldn't suggest it as the Ryzen platform is not so stable on SLI support. So even though this motherboard supports it, I would just stick with one powerful graphics card. The buyer who's particularly going to buy this is basically the one that is looking for the bare bone necessities. And that's the reason why I picked it up. It had all the things that I wanted it to. I was going to install an M.2 internal SSD. So that's got one slot for it. So that's pretty much fine. It's got all the bells and whistles. It's got USB 3.1. It's got USB type C and it's got all the other things that you really, really need. And it's got also an, a 10, gig, 10 gigabyte ethernet. So that's pretty good. And moreover, the only downside that I found this motherboard to have is that it does not have more than one M.2. So if I want to expand, I was like kind of capped on it. So I will have to probably swap the one existing that I have for a bigger capacity. Now, if you want more M.2 support, then probably you'll have to move to the enthusiast platform or look elsewhere. The other major downside is it doesn't have Wi-Fi on board. So that means you have to factor in, apart from the motherboard, another additional, maybe say 10 to 15 bucks, depending on which sort of PCIe adapter for Wi-Fi you're picking up. So that's also another additional cost you need to take into consideration. But other than that, it's pretty, pretty much solid. Uh, I will be posting another video that shows overclocking capabilities or the BIOS of how it particularly functions. I didn't find many too much in detail videos about this particular board and the MSI software. So I'll try to make a video with the 1700 chipset that I'm going to put in it along with the, how you can step-by-step -step overclock it. So if you're interested in something like that, uh, do let me know down in the comments below. So that being said, if you enjoyed this sort of build guide videos, if you want more or insight on a few more other key components, do let me know down in the comments below. I'll try to make sure that I put some videos out if you need more of it. The next video that you can look for is basically about the case that I chose. Uh, that's a particularly interesting topic and it's an interesting case that I chose from and you'll see why it's pretty much bang for the buck again. Most of these components, if you notice, uh, apart from my CPU, which I justify why I needed it, um, is pretty much bang for the buck. So if you're looking for a system that is gonna be extremely powerful, yet it's not gonna break your bank, I think you should go to my build guide and pick up the same components that I did. That being said, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Till then, you guys stay awesome.